Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another episode of our series Power of People which profiles the who source of the music industry and today on this special episode we have with us a singer, songwriter and an author Vineet Singh Hukmani. We welcome you here today sir. Hi Ajasvi, thank you. It's good to be here. So sir, my first question to you is tell us about your musical journey so far. You have been here for quite a quite a time now so tell us about it and who was your biggest inspiration so my musical journey uh formally and professionally is just three years old yeah when i've been in the radio industry before that and being associated with the with the media and entertainment industry for a very long time uh, yeah. it's only after i uh you know had uh, exited from radio one as mm-hmm. shareholder founder and we sold it to a large media group in 2021 is that i got into music full time <clears throat> yeah. um, and uh, in that short time, uh, I've had very good guidance from a very good management team in the US. So that has helped uh, you know us as a team to achieve a lot of unique things in a very short period of time. Mm-hmm. You know, multi Grammy submissions, chart topic stuff. Uh, my inspiration has always been you know uh, a lot of uh, uh, English bands uh, from early from the eighties, where uh, you know I used to listen when I was a uh, when when I was like you know in school and stuff like that. And, uh, but I think I'm equally inspired by a lot of people, a lot of new age uh, singers even today. So yeah, it was a Michael Jackson in those days or whether it's a Bruno Mars today. And in India, whether it's a Shankar Mahadevan or whether it was a Kishore Kumar or whether, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, various uh, people inspire you in various ways. And I think I'm more inspired by people who seek originality and seek uh, yeah. and you know, put all their hard work and effort into that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It, so it's it has quite a, uh, you know, I would say these three years was you know, uh, quite challenging for you, or it it went very smooth for you. So what all challenges you faced? So the challenge was that uh, I did not know it will it will be uh, so difficult, you know. So yeah. when I met my uh, you know agent Martin, I mean for the first time when we started speaking, he told me and they basically liked the earlier the small demo kind of music that I had done. So he told me that uh, you have to start with the thought that you don't know anything. Yeah. And uh, for a person who's been around for some time, I thought uh, that was a little difficult. So that night I told him, give me one day, uh, you know, think to think about this. I didn't sleep that night. And then when I woke up in the morning, I came with the thought that, uh, yes, I really don't know anything. Uh, so I think challenges become easy when you accept that you don't know anything. That means you're a clean slate and you can start from scratch. But having said that, he put me really on a on a on a huge amount of uh, work. So every forty five days, I had to release a song of a different genre. Uh, it was rock, pop, hip hop, uh, gospel, R and B. We did one by one like this, uh, uh, thirteen songs in about thirteen months. Uh, no, in the first, uh, so every 45 days and it had to be released it had to be put on radio globally it had to you know go up to the charts and again repeat that whole cycle so i think uh, that was my biggest challenge to you know uh, possibly uh, you know be ha- have to work so hard but uh, i learned a lot from that i mean i'm i'm really glad i started with the thought that i don't know anything and mm-hmm. uh, i've been able to learn something because of of that thing so i think challenges are good for you challenges teach you things you know so challenges are uh, challenges are never something that you should be afraid of Mm-hmm. So, um, the biggest challenge in the music industry right now is for the independent artist. Are you, are you getting me? Without any record label support, without any, you know, management support. They are doing really well these days, I see. So, do you feel any, you know, any drawback for yourself also as an independent artist? Yeah, so... Uh... I think the big advantage of an independent artist is you have the freedom to create uh, you know, what you want, right? Yeah. So that, I, I would say, is the biggest uh, advantage. Uh, when you look at what the industry is like, so what is a label, really? A label is giving you a structure, and yeah. they are then giving you funding. These are the two things. They're telling you, this is what you should release when, this is how you should do it, and this is the money that we'll put behind you. Uh, for you to uh, move forward. And obviously, they have a stake in you, so therefore, they earn also because of you, right? Yeah. And today, the independent music scene has changed. Uh, when you do, so there are two types of independent musicians, I would say. Mm. Independent musicians who are doing this as a hobby and independent yeah. musicians who are doing this very, very professionally and commercially. 
Mm. So because of my agent managing me, I have come into the latter category. Though I am an independent musician, I am managed very, very professionally. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a proper plan what to release when. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a uh, earning, a, a revenue kind of plan. That this is what mm. comes out of royalties. This is what will come out of sync leasing. This is what will come out of the song rentals into multiple languages. This is what will come out of you know your song being played in Netflix or uh, this thing. So they have a whole uh, bunch of people who sell your catalog again and again so that you can make your money. Mm. Now uh, for that, you need tell to us about this process more. I'm very intrigued to know about it more. Yeah, I'll give you an business. example. So I had a song called Jab the World, which I wrote yeah. during the COVID thing, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that song is translated into at least six or seven different European languages. Oh, so wow. now uh, that is the job of the agent to. Uh, so what this is called is basically called catalog monetization. That means oh. when you produce a catalog which has already been in the radio charts and we are already topping, so that uh, uh, music already has some kind of equity. So then basically pitch that music to Amazon, to Netflix, to other artists, to things that they keep on doing that again and again so that your uh, uh, money makes, uh, so your music makes uh, money. So this is the e-commerce side of the music business actually. So whether you're an independent musician or whether you're a labeled musician, the same people actually can buy your music and actually help you to make uh, that money. You know? So that's why I started off saying that if you're doing, uh, if you're an independent musician who's just a hobbyist, uh, you may be just releasing stuff, you know, you may be just putting up stuff and hoping that uh, some kind of thing happens with this. But when you have a professional management agency, they guide you on what to produce, when to produce, how to put it on radio, how to monetize, and they make an annual plan for you. And of course, they take a they take a very large commission where, uh, like, for example, my agency takes away 40% of what I earn, but then I'm able to earn um, much more because of their efforts and because of their guidance. But, and nowadays we have reels also. You know, independent artists only put their songs on reels and they are going viral. Mm -hmm. For some reason, the uh, the Instagram platform is also working so well for for the artists. I I would say. So, what Absolutely. is your point on that? Do you follow any social media campaigns for your own songs? Yeah, so I, uh, like I said, because the agency uh, that works, they work on all facets of it. So they yeah. work on music, they work on, on uh, Instagram in a very short period of time. In three years, I have over 1.6 million followers on Instagram. Yeah. So, so that is because of their uh, systematic work that has been done. So, uh, so they start with whatever chart, uh, you know, successes have happened. They start with putting those posts. They start with... Uh, all the achievements that have happened and then so now even the newest uh, the latest song which is born in bharat born for india uh, within mm -hmm. i think 22 hours we are already at uh, the 12 lakh uh, instagram real views you know one point yeah, regarding million. that only tell us about your latest song born in bharat born in india and i really want you to sing also for i mean two lines sure 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 okay. so the the new song is uh, basically uh, written for in praise of uh, our everyday indians you know people all of us indians you know we really work very hard and uh, i think uh, just a thank you uh, for your contribution i'm talking about everyday people you know when you're traveling on a highway we forget to thank that there are so many highway engineers and people who build this highway when you're eating some nice fruit you forget to say thank you to the farmer who grew it when you're, when you're, when you're uh, you know, uh, you forget to thank your teachers, even on Teacher's Day, because they have uh, done so much. I, I, if you have gone to a doctor ever and the doctor has helped you, I think even two months down the line, you don't even think of the doctor anymore unless you are very ill. So I'm saying, you know, you need to thank the people around who are contributing uh, to making the, it's the people who make the country great. And if we all say thank you to each other, I think that uh, recognition and that energy will be, will, will be really, really high. You know, sometimes you're working on a, say, on a Sunday, right? And you had a very bad day. Uh, and at that time, somebody just says, hey, you did a great job. Thank you for doing that because, you know, it was it was, uh, it was was fantastic what you did. Suddenly, you've got so much energy and so much uh, this thing to even probably work uh, uh, the next Monday and Tuesday without even knowing that you worked on the weekend. You know? mm. Born in Bharat, Born for India is a, is a thank you to all our co-contributors, all our Indians, farmers, lawyers, doctors, uh, you know, scientists technologists that thank you for doing all that you're doing for India because there could be only one reason that we all work so hard that is to make the country go forward and to make sure that the economy improves and all the things mm -hmm. improve. and it is coming near Republic Day it has come near Republic Day only tomorrow is Republic Day yeah. 
so, so it's a very i wrote the song as a beginning new yeah. new year beginning as a new thing to start a fresh energy to begin the year with but of course uh, a song with the, such an essence and such a patriotic yeah, feeling uh, will work uh, on any celebration of the nation which is yeah. whether it's republic day or whether it's uh, independence, independence day. day and i think every day should be republic day and independence day because you know you cannot just have a feeling or that energy for the country for two days you need to have it uh, throughout the year you know and people do and people do yeah. i just feel that it's time to celebrate that. So I'll sing uh, two lines from the yeah, song, from lyrics, uh, yeah. which is the uh, real first lyrics that I wrote of the song and then the rest of the song mm -hmm. came around it. It is like this. Koi bole Bharat, koi bole India, Bharat hi hai mata, hamari mother India, we are born in Bharat, we are born for India. We are born for Bharat. We are born in India. It will be a huge anthem, I would say. It's very nice and totally appropriate for a you know this auspicious day that that is tomorrow, and it was lovely. So, <laughs> uh, Vineet sir, I would like to know that um, how did your experience in the radio industry influence your journey as a singer and share some memorable moments or achievements during your tenure in Radio 1? So I think radio has been my love since I was a kid and I did a small show when I used to be in 10 standard and I always wanted to run a radio station but wow. I didn't uh, really get that opportunity till 2007 where uh, you know uh, Mr. Tariq Ansari me we all got together and started 94.3 Radio 1 and I was uh, co-founder and shareholder. Oh. I think that uh, those 12-13 years before we sold the company and of course in yeah. 2019 we sold the company to HD Media but um, those 12 13 years were fantastic to understand for me personally the power of radio yeah. uh, for me radio is actually the real first social media I, actually it is the place which is live you can talk to people the listeners on air you can you can talk about what's happening locally that buzz and the speed at which things happen in radio is really really fast mm. but most important lesson i learned uh, which was when i traveled uh, to other countries for radio seminars and things like that about the power of radio in those countries like in the US or in the UK where no song, no artist can be a star without being on radio. Even today, it is huge. Every song is launched on radio between the US and UK. There are about 2,67,000 radio stations even active today. And uh, the cumulative reach of these radio stations is about 1.7 billion people a week. All the streaming put together is only 50 million a week. So where is 50 million and where is 1.7 billion? So today also a Lady Gaga or a Beyonce or an Adele, they will never miss their radio promotion campaign. They will go physically, they will go to all the radio stations and they will talk because radio has a huge, huge shared listenership. So if you look at uh, City of Chicago, 47 radio stations where my first song, uh, you know, uh, Dreaming Out Loud was launched. I, I really realized the power of it because suddenly 17, 18 RJs together speaking and so many people listening to the song together. So discovery on radio, a discovery of a song on radio is huge. It is unparalleled uh, compared to anything else even today. Yeah. Now, course, streaming and all, they have their advantages of easy access. So if I were to say one word that defines radio is discovery and one word that defines streaming is access, that you can get the song wherever you want. But you know, when you're listening to Spotify or Apple or Amazon and I'm listening to Spotify, we don't really know what we are listening to each other because we are on headphones and it's this thing. But radio is like a loudspeaker. There are so many people who are uh, listening at the same time. So my greatest learning from running the radio station and now in my music career is that the shared listenership of radio, the power of radio for discovery of a new artist, for discovery of a new song is completely unparalleled. And while streaming has its advantages, I don't think any artist, whether you're an Indian artist or whether you're a global artist, you should ever ignore radio and make your plan based on completely on how you want your songs to perform on radio. And by the way, all the top charts in the world, Billboard, DRT, Cashbox Magazine, all are based still today on radio airplay. Radio, yeah. And, uh, so uh, without those, uh, without radio, you can't have the charts. Without the charts, you can't really know which artist is going up and down. So I respect whatever streaming is doing. I respect that, but mm. but I'm saying that uh, you know you have to use the combination of both radio and streaming to actually grow your profile. Yeah, its relevance is here right now with us. We can see it. Radio industry is nowhere going. 
So your, uh, we need to say your creative uh, pursuits also include being an author. So can you tell us about your writing journey and any upcoming projects for us? So uh, my uh, writing also is linked to my music. I was trying yeah. to do something innovative. So my first album, uh, which was with nine songs, the album was called Nine. And uh, that's the one which I got the world record for because all yeah. nine became number one in Europe. Uh, so along with that, I wanted to do something for the, for actually for the Indian audience to rediscover the music. So I wrote a book of uh, nine action thriller stories. That book was called Nine. At the end of each story was one one song and a QR code. So you could finish reading the story and then go to a QR code and listen to the song with the same theme. Mm. So uh, that song, that uh, uh, you know, you know, this thing book really did well on Amazon. We sold over 22, 23,000 mm. copies. It was number one on the hot new releases and bestseller list for almost about eight weeks. And uh, that taught me one thing that uh, I think we must find new ways to present our music. And uh, the business reason to do that was, uh, you know, today music is free. People don't pay yeah. uh, anything for a song. Like before you used to buy a CD for 400 rupees or something like that. This book retailed for about 410 rupees. And therefore I would, I was able to get a new revenue stream um, mm -hmm. of this particular things. You know, we independent musicians, we need to think innovatively to do these things. Yeah. And I got a new set of listeners, people who are actually book readers who had never ever heard of my music before. They bought the book and they heard the music and therefore that gave me a further uh, boost uh, to this whole thing. No? And now my agency is uh, pitching this book of stories to uh, to be made into maybe short movies or short uh, things like that. In wow. the so, uh, so that's what I'm saying that you know you need to look at an ecosystem when you're an independent artist, not just look at a Ghana release key or bad guy. You yeah. have to do so many things. So post that uh, when I did a song called Run Run Run, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, a song about running and about energy. And yeah. Milan Soman really liked that song. He ran to that and he's put an Instagram reel also wow. uh, with that song. So I created a superhero character along with that song called Run Storm and released a comic book called Run Storm and the Hope Star. It was a whole adventure of, of this person who goes to various galaxies, uh, you know, using his running as a power and, mm. uh, you know, uh, vanquishing all evil and stuff like that. So that comic book was done for the same reason because it uh, targeted a younger generation, a younger, um, even kids. We sold a lot of those comic books in schools. Mm -hmm. Same thing. You could read the comic book and there was a QR code and then you could listen to the song and watch a small animation film. You know? So I think the written word allows you to reach a different audience. Uh, the written word is still something that uh, people pay for, you know, uh, whether it's Amazon or, or stuff like that. So. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that the written word, whether I wrote my first book or the comic book, it helps to reach a different audience. Yeah. Um, and uh, the written word still today is something that you can charge for. Amazon is a brilliant marketplace. You can, uh, you know, so these books, uh, they sell for a particular price. And when people pay for something, they get a little more involved. Mm -hmm. uh, music has become uh, really a commodity today in by itself. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So much of music is available to you at 60 rupees a month or even free. You can listen to any album you want. Because people are not paying for it, their involvement goes down and it becomes a commodity. So you had to create other things. You had to create, uh, like I did the book, I, I did the comic book. Mm -hmm. And with this song, we have launched an online store, which is called uh, Born in Bharat Today, where uh, the stuff that I'm wearing, it says uh, mm -hmm. Bharat Born, in, uh, Born for India. Mm -hmm. uh, this has over uh, 55 products, uh, which wear, you know, badges, cushion covers, so many things, uh, sweatshirts, all those things so that you can wear your Bharat, the baseline is wear your Bharat India energy yeah. every day. Mm. So a lot of people are ordering stuff because the, the, the they're liking the song and then they want to wear yeah. something to mm. that and that too on Republic Day. And we are not keeping this as any kind of uh, profit making thing. It's mostly to spread this positive energy of Bharat mm. India uh, through the store. But again, I'm, I'm uh, following the same idea that with every song, I'm trying to create an ecosystem uh, which allows for uh, more engagement, more revenue, more things rather than... So the song is still central to everything, yeah. but it's not, it's not the only thing. There are other things that you need to do, like a 360 degree thing, so that uh, you know people get uh, involved more with the music. In your terms, I would say, how has music business has changed in the coming years and what we can expect in 2024 from it? So uh, I'll, I'll speak more about what I know internationally. Yeah. Uh, India is a little behind in that, but sooner or later it will reach there because yeah. those are the global trends. Yeah. So today when a new musician is launching globally, they do not expect that musician to do all three things. Earlier, what used to happen is when you're a musician, you're saying, you know, I'm going to make a song. 
I'm also going to sell a lot of music and I'm going to also perform live. You're going to do all these three things. Now the competition is so much that your agents and everybody else advises you to choose one of these three things very carefully, right? Uh, live is the retail side of the business, meaning that today an Amazon is an e-commerce store. They don't have uh, retail stores, but live music is the retail side because you have to sell tickets, you need a venue, you need a band, you need to travel. That's the physical side of the business. You cannot go into the physical side unless you have established yourself on the e-commerce side. Mm. So the good, all the good professionals will advise you that don't try to do everything together. First, learn how to create great music. Go yeah. on radio. Establish your chart credentials. Then develop a catalog of music. Catalog of music means you're a catalog producer and e-commerce is the main source of revenue. Like I explained, your catalog is sold to multiple sources for you to make money. Only after you have established that, you then step into live because live is a different ball game. It has its own competition and things like that. If you try to do all the three things together, you will not have enough time to do that. And most of the time, musicians are spreading themselves so thin that they think, they say, I will do one song and I'll perform two or three places live and my, my job is done. And then they wonder why the momentum is not coming and why yeah. it's not able to earn. So the global uh, you know, trend is teaching you that you need to be uh, uh, you know, focused on each part and expert on each part slowly and then come into the thing. So even though it has been three years, I have still yeah. not reached the phase of actually performing live. Yeah. I'm enjoying the part of being making a catalog because what happens is the minute you start performing live, your studio work stops. My catalog producing will stop. It's like saying, you know, suppose you are looking after your factory and suddenly you say, okay, I'll go and sit at the retail outlet. Then who's going to manufacture the product? Who's going to make... Yeah. Uh, that uh, continuously in India, we are uh, because uh, everything is strongly Bollywood led in this country. Mm. Independent music, glo music globally is always independent. It has got nothing to do with films. Mm. Uh, so whether it is a uh, uh, Lady Gaga or uh, Rihanna or all these people, they are probably richer than Tom Cruise. Uh, that's because yeah. uh, that power of music and the power of the industry is huge. Yeah. Over here, un, uh, independent music is growing and it is growing out of the Bollywood shadow, which is a good thing. But uh, you need professional guidance. And I'm sure that guidance is coming in the form of proper agencies and proper companies who are going to take the independent artists and through this journey. In fact, my own company, which we have call, uh, called greatsong.world, is doing that. We are trying to help Asian musicians to understand that first produce high quality global music, then put it on radio, get your chart credentials right, build your catalog, build your uh, you know uh, e-music or your e-commerce revenue. Then step into the live thing and then uh, do that, you know. So I'm sure there'll be other agencies, other people coming to yeah. guide uh, India. See, the talent is a lot in India. Yeah. Uh, the talent is huge. Uh, yeah. There are donors which are growing. But unless those artists start making regular money and yeah. sustaining themselves, they will not be able to do the next step. They will yeah. soon otherwise get frustrated and say, Dekho, film music is uh, yeah. You know, all the complaints that you hear. Yeah. Is because the industry is not the organized. narrative is that yes you need to so i'm sure the uh, organized way is coming the talent is there but we need a method now i only say this thing to all the any independent musician i meet i say that look if you are doing music for your own heart and soul please do it there are no rules but if you are doing it commercially you need to follow a set of rules uh, you cannot uh, without understanding how the trade works uh, your creativity will get wasted. You need to apply that creativity and channelize it in a way that the trade works so that you get the best benefit. Mm. Yeah, that's great. So any advice you have for aspiring singers looking forward, who are looking forward to break in, into the industry? Any advice you would like to give them? So I think I have learned this the hard way and uh, now I can articulate it and now I can share that and I have no, uh, absolutely no problem in sharing everything that I know with, with mm. anyone. The first thing is, I think, uh, before you will start making a song, mm -hmm. you need to close your eyes and imagine that uh, if there are 200 people sitting and listening to the song, who are these people? Yeah. Uh, you need to be able to imagine who these target people are. Target audience, basically. Not just a target audience, uh, that's because that's like a marketing term, but I think uh, close your eyes and from your heart, imagine that these people have come to listen to you. Uh, what is the reason? What is there in your song? Or what is there in your personality that you think that these people are going to come and listen to you? And what is the mood? What is the vibe that you're going to create that those 200 people want to come to listen to you again? 
So today what people do is we start with, oh, hip hop is doing very well. Let me do a hip hop song. Right? There are there are uh, there is the bachas of the world, and there are so many hip hop artists. Why would they come to listen to you? So you have to choose your genre and you have to choose your creative musicality and what you are trying to say. You need to be original in that. And uh, then only people will come. So that's the first piece of advice is purely creative that even before you start a song, please understand yourself and look deep within as an artist, right? The second is, uh, if your song has to be played again and again, whether it's on streaming, whether it's on radio, it has to have what is called repeat listening value. Mm. Uh, it has to be not a long song. It cannot be more than three, three and a half minutes. And you have to start with a very catchy chorus. The first thing that you compose of the song is the chorus and the catchiness. And if people start snapping their fingers in eight, nine seconds, then you have a winner chorus. Then you make the rest of the song around that chorus. Don't mm. try to just be so philosophical and just uh, show off your vocabulary in the music. You have to have something which uh, vibes with people and therefore is very catchy and stuff like that. And the third is what I started this conversation with. Uh, please uh, start with the thought that you don't know anything yeah. and you will learn. Um, if you are, uh, if your ego comes in the way, you will never learn anything. Yeah. So destroy your ego, finish your ego and start with a, with a clean slate and say, look, I don't know anything. And uh, my agent is much, much younger to me. Uh, but I know that he knows much, much more than me. Mm. I have yeah. learned from him only because of that and not only from him from various people across the world, from YouTube, from... So today, I feel I'm a complete uh, artist. They call me, uh, uh, the my agency calls me with a joke. They call it MMF, Mini Music Factory. Uh -huh. uh, because today, I can write a song, compose it, play all the instruments, yeah. uh, mix it, master it, create the video. I can do that all that my, by, by myself. Mm -hmm. And because of that, my cost becomes low. And then I'm able to earn more and, and things like that. But that could not have been possible if I told myself, look, I'm a great singer. I already know everything. Yeah. And uh, so you have to start from scratch. So yeah. these are three pieces of advice. I think that if, and if anybody, one of your listeners or further, uh, you know, uh, independent musicians ever want to get in touch, they can just, uh, you know, reach out to me. I'm there on Instagram. And a company is called greatsong.world on, on the, this thing. My, my website is vineet.today. Uh, they are free to any time contact me. I'll be happy to share this information. Yeah. That's great, Vineet. So that's really, really, you know, inspiring at the same time. So, Vineet, sir, any upcoming projects lined up? Yeah, so I have uh, uh, now, because earlier I was doing only international stuff and uh, that follows a plan. Uh, but now that I'm into Hindi music, uh, the first song, which was which was my tribute, was to Isro, which was called Isro India, because the hero that, that yeah. started Mm. and did really well with the people, really the well. people in this row and now this song which is about the country I, I really think I found my genre for Hindi mm. I want to I, I call this Deshi pop uh, yeah. not Desi Desi is local but Deshi means uh, in praise of the nation and praise of the Desh and I want to continue to do Hindi stuff in this genre only I am uh, not interested to do anything in hip hop or in, hip -hop, in yeah. songs or a filmy stuff and all that. But of course, the sound design of the song. So the first song, which was the Isro song, was in a reggae style. This is more electro pop. Uh, I'll keep changing the style of the song, but the theme of the music will always be about about uh, you know about uh, the good things that are happening in our country and stuff that unites us all and makes us all one. You know? So I'll continue to do genre based things. So my agent wants me to do something in the in the English side, uh, in the operatic way. I've never tried opera before. So I'm doing some training for that now. I don't know whether I'll be successful, but the, that is on the cards. Mm -hmm. And um, then there is another song which uh, they want me to do uh, something in the jazz area. Uh, but these are the two things for this year. Uh, mm -hmm. These are non-commercial things. Mm -hmm. uh, in Hindi, I want to write a song about travel, uh, about traveling in your own country. Uh, mm -hmm. And the joy and the pleasure of that. Uh, no headaches of visas and travel and foreign currency and all those nonsensical things. You know, you can just travel everywhere. And mm -hmm. especially after this whole, uh, uh, you know, wonderful thing of people discovering Lakshadweep. Yeah. I think you just make a list. There are so many things in our own country we haven't seen. So I, I hope somebody sponsors me for that. And I travel to all these places and I want to make the video also like that. And about a song, which is about the most beautiful places in our country to travel to. So these are the more, more or less what's on the cards. Let's hope it works. So, Vinita, I would like to ask you that if you get an offer from Bollywood perspective that you want to, you know, uh, for some some movie like, you know, this only, this genre only, uh, the, you know, the, uh, like uh, the fighter movie is coming. 
has come so if you get any chance to get in the bollywood you would you would join or you would not join you would not go what uh, will you do or you see, will follow this path only see i am a independent musician by choice and uh, i like this i i uh, yeah. i have and i have a lot to do in this i mean i'm still st- i've just started i have not mm-hmm. even achieved what close to what my aim and ambition is mm-hmm. but you said uh, it perfectly if yeah. the bollywood movie is with this theme Yeah, like fighter, like Sam Bhagat, uh, mm-hmm. like uh, so when I watch Randev or something, I love that song. You know, I mean, I mm-hmm. I love to sing for uh, because it is my genre. It is something that I love doing. You know, and uh, if anything is coming upcoming in Bollywood, which is to do with uh, with the country and with that energy and you know with with, mm-hmm. with my vibe, you know, I'd love to do it. I mean, I, that would yeah. be something. But you know, it's something that comes natural to me, and I enjoy doing. Uh, yeah. at the same time i don't think i am a very good singer for love songs or i'm not a good singer for yeah definitely rap. everybody and has its own job uh, yeah one should recognize one's own weaknesses and strengths and then uh, do that and so if somebody offers me something which is my strength I, of course i would jump to it i would love it. yeah so thank you so much vineet sir for your time it was our pleasure to have you here and happy republic day uh, same to you ojasvi happy republic day to you to the loudest dot in team to everybody at exchange for media And thank, thank you for you so having me on Power Pitch. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, sir.